The RTX 40 series is already in production and Nvidia says, oh, they're coming. What's also coming for you is PS5 price increases as well as more Ryzen 7000 benchmarks. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. In today's top story, we're gonna be talking about how we got details of the RTX 4090 being already in production. This is coming out of a leak of some graphics card department where we can see, yes, they are making these GPUs. You can see it's the 8102 GPU with 24 gigs of RAM, three display port and one HDMI, no USB-C, that's dead with the RTX 20 series. And you can see over here, it's the RTX 3090 with them also producing other GPUs like the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti. Also being shown in this is that the production schedule looks like it is being produced this month in the month of August. That's what the eight is standing for there. So they are indeed actually making them right now, which seems a little soon, but we now have more details coming out from NVIDIA that we should be getting an announcement because they had their Q2 earnings call where they discussed, hey, we're kind of down in revenue, but it's fine because it wasn't really miners. It's just gamers not wanting to buy our product. But they also announced that they're gonna be having a GTC event on September 20th. So in just under a month from now, we should be getting an announcement of an announcement. I feel like I'm saying an announcement, like I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but I don't, I'm just gonna keep going quite quick on it. For that, Jensen actually confirming that there will be an unveiling of the new architecture during the keynote, whether or not it's just about the architecture or the specific products, hard to say, but combine that with the fact that we are seeing the RTX 4090 go into production and combine that with the fact that he's talking about exciting next generation GPU updates that are happening, as well as the fact that they're struggling with excess inventory of the RTX 30 series, but that this announcement shouldn't conflict with that, that would tell me that they are likely trying to just get rid of the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti, and they're gonna push the 4090 on us really quickly with Jensen coming out and saying, our strategy is to reduce the sell in this quarter and next quarter to let channel inventory correct. Obviously we're off the highs because of mining and the macro condition turned sharply worse, like nobody could have forecasted. And so our first strategy is to reduce sell in in the next couple of quarters to correct channel inventory. We've also instituted programs to price position our current products to prepare for next generation products. Ampere is the most popular GPU we've ever created because it was created mining. It is in the top 15 most popular gaming GPUs on Steam and it remains the best GPUs in the world. If it's the most popular GPU that they've ever made and it's only in the top 15, that doesn't sound like gamers are actually using it. And it will be very successful for some time. However, we do have exciting new next generation coming and it's going to be layered on top of that. And so we've taken, we've done two things. We've reduced sell and to let channel inventory correct, and we've implemented programs with our partners to price position the products in the channel in preparation for our next generation. All of this we anticipate we're working towards a path of being in good shape going into next year, okay? So that's what our game plan is. Essentially outlining what Nvidia is going to be doing about the current setup. They are pushing out the GPUs out the door, specifically the high end to make way for the RTX 4090, and we will likely not see very many of the lower end or higher end still like the RTX 4080 or potentially even 4070 launch until Q1 of next year because you guys aren't buying enough GPUs. Did you not read Jensen's comments? The, the, they have too much channel inventory. There was a sharp downturn due to macro conditions. So they've got to reduce it. They've got to reduce it. And it's only a top 15 most popular gaming GPU on Steam. Only top 15. It needs to be number one. Why is it the most popular GPU in NVIDIA has ever made, NVIDIA is the most popular GPU manufacturer, but they're only number 15. The mind boggles at how these things are working out. Buy more RTX 30 series is what you should understand from that whole thing. This is your fault that you're not getting the RTX 4070 now. Not NVIDIA's, not them selling to a consumer base that radically disintegrated because uh, mining conditions got worse and the merge is happening. That couldn't have possibly been seen by anybody. But just like I couldn't see the RTX 30 series crash happened. And I didn't, I honestly did not see Corsair releasing a bendy OLED on my like bingo list for 2022. They came out, this was everywhere. Most of the major tech YouTubers covered this. I'm not including that list. It's a bendable 45 inch ultra wide OLED that you can curve. It's crazy. I love it so much. This looks gorgeous. The Xenion Flex, I, they're showing it off at Gamescom. It looks phenomenal. I 
honestly really want one. 45 inch, 3440 by 1440, 240 hertz, as I mentioned, OLED, G-Sync, FreeSync Premium, a thousand nits brightness. It's it's crazy. Of course, they're saying that they are fighting against burn-in with sophisticated burn-in prevention system, which operates when both powered on and when switched off to ensure a flawless image, even after extended UI or OS use, all backed by a three year, zero burn-in and zero dead pixel warranty. Wow, that's better than a trust me bro warranty. That's crazy. That's actually pretty good. I. I am skeptical of using an OLED as like my daily driver for a PC. I guess I could activate Windows so that I can have the taskbar lower so that's not burning in. But if they have a three year zero burn in warranty, that's crazy. I want one. It is likely going to be insanely priced. If we look at something like the Alienware QD OLED, that thing's cr close to two grand. This thing's probably gonna be well north of that. Pro Four grand, maybe? I don't know. I can't afford it. Corsair, would you like to work together? I have YouTube channels, multiple. I'd love to talk to you. And I would love to talk to you, dear listener, viewer, whoever you are, about crypto stonks. Don't you know it's going to change the world and give you kidney stone treatments. I've never had kidney stones, but I've had friends who have kidney stones and it seems brutal. I probably shouldn't make light of it. It's not it's not a fun thing. Not bad. Anyways, Bitcoin up 0.69%. Nice. To be at 21598. Ethereum up 2%. Having a smashing day. 1694. And Dogecoin up 1.74% to be at 6 point eight cents and I want Reese's sense to talk about the UFD deals because he has the sense to find the hottest tech deals out on the internet. What you got buddy? Hey friends welcome back to UFD deals where you're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I would just like to start out by saying sorry to Brett for causing him all that trouble not really. I really enjoy pressing Brett's buttons and if you enjoy pressing buttons the Razer Basilisk ultimate hyperspeed wireless gaming mouse has you covered with 11 programmable ones. With this 20k DPI sensor 100 hours of battery life that you can top up with the included charge charging dock and the ever classic Razer Chroma RGB which I will say doesn't make sense on a mouse because your hand covers it but none of that should stop you because at $79.99 this is $90 off for this combo which is 53% off the total price and just remember you can find all these deals and more linked in the video description but until then I'll see you back on Monday with the UFD deals and then I, I don't know I can do the woo. Very cool, Reese. I also like to wheeze the juice. Thanks for the hottest tech deals. You're you're a right old pal. And I want to be pals with Kia because they are showing off more of their EV9 upcoming electric SUV. And if they keep the suicide doors, I want it. I want it so badly. If it's just a regular SUV, I'm going to pass. But if they keep the suicide doors, I'm so excited. So they're showing off more images. It has that like wrapping that not fully produced cars have. I, can somebody explain this to me in the comments? I've looked it up before, I think a long time ago. I think this is there to like make it so that the final designs that aren't finished aren't really pictured. So if they like change some angling or things on the body panels, it's not really seen. Is that what that wrapping's for? Just to make sure that like people aren't taking photos of pre-production units and being like, this is what it's gonna look like when they might actually change it. I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Kia EV9 looking pretty slick. The there's not much more they're giving out. They're just showing pictures, but this is what they talked about when they unveiled this car was having the doors that swing open the other way, which for me and my family's needs would be incredible. I absolutely want one. Honda Element style EV from Kia. Please and thank you, but no please and no thank you for me towards Ford because they are announcing they're jacking up the price of the Mustang Mach-E as much as over eight grand. Ford's saying it's because of significant material cost increases, continued strain on key supply chain and rapidly evolving market conditions, such as the Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to bring a new $7,500 point of sale because tax credit that everybody's excited about couldn't possibly be that, even though uh, a lot of the increases are roughly around that price point. So for the cheaper ones, like the select versions, the rear wheel drives only going up about $3,000. The California Route 1 is increasing a substantial amount from $52 up to $63,000. The premium's going from $48 to $50. 54, and the GT extended range is going from 61 to $69,000. And don't you dare say nice because that's eight grand. That's like the whole tax credit. Ford just trying to take in the money. They already have the tax credit, so it 
does exist, but this should open it up to more people because instead of it being taken from the tax burden, it's done at the point of sale. And then if it's, as far as I understand, still based on the tax burden, but then people would have to fight it back on their taxes. And so Ford could get the dealership to charge it so that it's discounted so the people think they're getting it. And then they just have to deal with Uncle Sam at the end of the day and not with Ford. And that's the whole bippity boppity shooty doppity. And it's not just Ford raising prices, Sony raising prices as well on the PlayStation 5, not in the US, which fine, whatever for American centrism is going on there. But for the rest of the globe, it does look like there's going to be substantial PlayStation 5 price increase for them saying challenging economic conditions, the production of all of it, material costs are going up, even if supply chains are kind of easing and making it so that it's easier to produce, the cost of everything has gone, gone up. And from just kind of a few analyses I've read about this, it does seem like Sony really needs to do this. They wouldn't do it, especially with how price competitive the Xbox Series S and Series X are in other parts of the world. If they're raising their price, they're going to give Microsoft the foothold. And I think Sony's taking that seriously. And the fact that they had to raise the price is likely something significant. So it's going to be about 50 euro more in a lot of different regions, 30 pounds more in a few other places. Now, hefty price increases. You can check the link in the video description if you're trying to find your area for Europe. It's going up to 550 euro for the disc edition. It's going up to 480 pounds in the UK. It's going up to 60,478 yen in Japan. China's going up to 4,299 yuan. Australia's going up to $800 in Australian money, which is apparently a real thing. Canadians are expected to pay 650 Canadian dollars. But in case you wanted to play Dark Souls 3 on your PC, segueing from a PS5 topic, well, uh, you can do multiplayer now because after seven months of them being down from some security issue, which was causing havoc on Dark Souls 3, it's been patched, finally, seven months. If you've been for some reason waiting for that and not playing Elden Ring online in the meantime, Dark Souls 3 is back and raring to go for you, baby. And TSMC is raring to go with AMD because it's been announced that they are set to become the second largest customer for TSMC, beating out MediaTek and being just behind Apple for who is paying them the most money to get the most things done. AMD switched to TSMC for Ryzen and they're producing a whole lot. AMD uses uh, a couple other foundries for different parts of Ryzen, but for the main chip that's being produced by TSMC, they've got their GPUs being produced at TSMC. It's it's a whole heckin' thing, but not to be forgotten, Samsung is still working with AMD on their Exynos SOCs for their mobile phones. You may have forgotten about this because it was highly underwhelming. The SOC that came out did not necessarily destroy everything like anybody expected. In fact, it was kind of worse than the rest of the SOCs that were on the market. And some of the reports that were coming out was that was due to thermal management. They get too hot and they're actually not really good for being put in a phone. But Samsung saying we plan to continue to implement other features in the RDNA series by working closely with AMD going forward. So they're still working with AMD it's it's still happening. They're just letting you know. And I'm letting you know that the Ryzen 7000 series chips continue to look better and better every passing day. We've got new benchmarks coming in from Cinebench R23 on the 7700X and 7600X, and they are looking to be pretty good. Roughly over 20% increase on both of these chips compared to their predecessors. It does look like Intel's still gonna have AMD beat when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, but as Intel has been very explicit, to let everybody know over the last few years where AMD's been dominating, synthetic benchmarks aren't real world applications. So you have to trust something else, but don't you worry. I'm, I'm gonna guarantee Intel's gonna just be tooting the horns of Cinebench because they're beating AMD yet again with the 13th generation, but compared the 7,000 series AMD to the 5,000 series AMD, and we're looking at mighty fine increases across the board to the point where the 7700X is getting really close to the 59 900X in multi-core score, which is pretty good considering it has four fewer cores and eight fewer threats. Yeah, I did the math right there. I'm good. Mm. And I'm good with this episode of Hot News. It's over. Your weekend can commence now, officially. You weren't allowed to start it before you watched this, but now you can. And I will see you back here on Monday for more of the hottest tech news around. Bye-bye. <laughs>